So today we're going to be solving another problem from the Berkeley integration, but this time from the 2020 competition. This is the integral between 0 and pi by 2 of x over the tangent of x with respect to x's. Well, let's just say um, quite a bit of a monster. <laughs> so how do I want to solve this problem? Well, first of all, I want to get rid of the tangent from the denominator. I really don't like it sitting there. So let me perform a u sub here. My u sub is going to look something like this. It's going to be the tangent of x of mine being equal to u. That will get me 1 plus the tangent squared of x dx equal to the du. But this is the same as saying that dx is just the du divided just the du divided by 1 plus the tangent squared of x, but that's exactly the same as just du divided by 1 plus 1 plus du itself squared. Awesome. That's an answer to the bounds of integration. Whenever x is 0, tangent is also a 0, so x being equal to 0 implies u being equal to 0 as well. However, whenever x approaches pi by 2, let's say, then u tends to infinity, which is just the tangent of 90 degrees. So that's going to be my u sub right there. And what is going to give me is the integral between 0 and infinity of. Well, now the x becomes the arc tangent of u, the inverse tangent of u, as Americans like to call it. Mm, all over u and then times 1 over 1 over 1 plus u squared du. And now I would like to solve this problem using the famous trick because, well, let's just be honest here, I hate the arc tangent there and it basically just looks messy as hell. So let me get rid of this arc tangent, for example. Well, if I put the parameter, for example, here in the arc tangent, so it's going to be the arctan of a times u there, if I differentiate with respect to a partially here, hmm, that's going to be awesome. <laughs> because I will get rid of the arc tangent, I'm going to, you know, get some squares in the denominators, it's going to be all nice and smooth, yeah? So I'm going to just call this entire thing here, this entire thing here, my integral function of the parameter. I am now going to mm, just go on and differentiate it with respect to a and i can do it this thing right here is going to be convergent no problem i mean arctangent is bounded between pi by two and negative pi by two so no problem on this interval whatsoever it's going to be the integral from zero to infinity of and now the derivative of the arctangent of a is one over it's going to be 1 over 1 plus a squared but we've got this u which is a constant with respect to a here so it's going to be all well, 1 over u times 1 plus u squared, I'm just writing this thing, and then times 1 over mm, 1 over 1 plus a squared u squared, and then by the chain rule, I will have to put a u here as well. Those two u's are going to cancel each other out nicely, and I'm left with the integral, the integral from 0 to infinity, of 1 over 1 plus u squared multiplied by 1 over 1 plus a squared u squared du. And now I don't really like the fact that I'm multiplying those two fractions in the integrand together because I, I can't really make this integral become two separate ones because I'm integrating stuff in the in the ground, I'm not adding stuff. So let me maybe use partial fractions here to get rid of the multiplication and, well, you know, evoke addition. However, using partial fractions is boring, so I'm just gonna skip it and say it's all equal to the integral from zero to infinity of one over one minus a squared over one plus u squared minus, well, this thing on the right, I don't really want to read it out loud, yeah. So how do we solve it further? First of all, I can just take this factor of 1 over 1 minus a squared in front of the integral all like this. So I'm going to get the integral, or rather 1 over 1 minus a squared times the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus u squared minus a squared over 
1 plus a squared u squared du, but this thing here, I know how to integrate. I'm just, I'm just gonna make this integral become two separate ones as I wanted earlier. Yeah, just like this. And now, well, the integral of this thing is just the arctangent and the integral of this thing just a times the arctangent. So, well, let me just write it down. I'm gonna get one over one minus a squared all multiplied by d arctangent of u arctangent of u minus a times the arctangent a times the arctangent of a times u all in the bounds of zero and infinity whenever arctangent is given a zero it spits out a zero so we don't really care about the lower bound whenever it's given infinity it spits out pi by two in the limit awesome so we're just gonna get one my one over one over one minus a squared multiplied by pi by two and now factor it out we're gonna get one minus a so this one minus a here cancel out cancels out with this one minus a squared there awesome pretty lovely and now we're just gonna get pi all over two times one plus a like this this is the derivative of our integral function with respect to the parameter a awesome because now we can just integrate it and get the well, integral function the original one not the no not its derivative but the problem is that if we do it if we take the indefinite integral i mean yeah we can do it. it's gonna be you know like pi by two log of one plus a plus some constant but yeah, plus a constant. I don't really like the idea of having a constant and, you know, having to find this value. I just hate it. So, maybe we can do something a little bit smarter than that. So, instead of just writing, um, you know, i of a is going to be the indefinite integral of this pi by 2 and 1 over 1 plus a dA, I would like to figure out some bounds of integration, let's say maybe... Um, I don't know, n and k. <laughs> Some bounds of integration are going to be, you know, um, smart, such that they will shorten our work a little bit, yeah? So, well, first of all, how do we get the lower bound? Well, if we now go back to the original definition of our i of a we had, if I plug, um, for example, 0 for a right here, yeah? So if I were to plug a 0 for a right there, one so sorry i i of zero then this arctangent would just become arctangent of zero which is a zero and because i'm multiplying all this stuff by this arctangent i'm gonna get just the integral of zero itself which is zero so we know that the i of zero is equal to zero well that's awesome and what is the value of i um, of a for which we care for the integral a equal to one so we care for i for i for i of one <laughs> i'm having my tongue twisted so we care yeah we care about this one so let me just maybe plug in the bounds of zero and one because the one the upper bound we care about it zero is gonna be all zero awesome and what we're gonna get by that is just pi by two times the natural log of natural log of a plus one, which is going to be the natural log of two, and then minus, whatever the hell it is, it's gonna be all zero, don't care. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna be a zero, I don't care. And so I get that, well, that's not i of a, but that's the integral i, i of one is this thing. And so I get that my i of one is equal to pi by 2 natural log of 2 and I can finally come over here and just speak the answer pi by 2 log of 2 awesome hope you guys enjoyed it and see you in the next one bye